Hello and welcome back to my channel. Um, in my video today I'm going to show you how to create a card using up your glitter stash. Um, so here in front of me I've got a card base. It's five by three and a half inches, um, which is the standard size that I've been using for the past couple of videos. I've just got a load of these card bases to use up so I thought I would make, make them up. Um, in this video I started out by talking through it and explaining things and then I found that I actually didn't have my words and I was a bit flustered and a bit distracted by kids and various other things. Um, so I thought I would just talk over it. Um, but today's video is all about using up your glitter. Um, so I've got this amazing box which you'll see now that my friend Annelle had gifted me before she moved away to the States. Hello Annelle if you're watching. Um, there's a bunch of glitter that I had previously, any of those things that say AL on them is my friend Anel. <laughs> um, and I picked up some extra glitters at some craft fairs and stuff for quite cheap. And I basically had this glitter accumulating and I thought I need to use these up. And I've been scared to use glitter because I also have two small children and I see what glitter can do with those um, little people. So I've been terrified to use it but I thought actually no, I need to get on, I need to break out this box, I need to use it. I need to see what glitter can do for me. Um, and I've been using up glitter card and it's getting quite costly. I really like proper glitter cards, so I thought let's let's see what we can do. Um, so I start out by getting out some PVA glue or some tacky glue. Um, and I decided that um oh hang on, now I'm getting ahead of myself now. I'm gonna show you all the bits that I'm gonna cover first. <laughs> Um, sorry, now, this is a hard thing when you dub over. Uh, so here are some wooden embellishments. I got a whole bunch of these from my friend Anel as well. And I've bought a few online from eBay and various places. They're just wooden laser cut um, elements. And then I've also got um, some chipboard die cuts as well. And I bought a few of these packs in different shapes and sizes um, online in some kind of clearance bin. and. Um, and these ones are really nice, but they're quite massive, although there are a few smaller ones. So here you can see each of the board. came with three different boards, um, and it's from Fancy Pants. I don't remember how much I paid, but I got it from one of these online craft shops for quite cheap. And um, and you just pay the shipping. So I thought, I need to try out using up some of these, because I haven't even opened the pack yet. Um, and there's three full sheets in there. So obviously, the big ones aren't going to work for a card. They're more for a scrapbooking. Um, or decorating, decorating something like a, a large box or something, but there's smaller ones in there that you can use. And then um, here's the box of wooden embellishments from my friend Anel, um, where I got the big flower, wooden flowers from that I was showing you. Um, I'm really sorry that the camera's doing this. I've got this really good light inside my office um, and it kind of flickers. I was just showing you there my punch, I was getting my punch out again because I can use my punch for shapes. So here I've punched out some decorative paper. It was just some flower paper I had sitting around. So I punched out three of those and then I put some tacky glue on and then sprinkled the iridescent white glitter over top um, just to see how that would look. And they're quite nice but they're quite flimsy. They're like very very thin but they'll be absolutely fine on a card as an embellishment. And it was a really cheap quick and easy way to get some glitter on a card. Then next I've got the wooden embellishment that I covered in glitter and on this one I use the Mod Podge instead of um, PVA glue or tacky glue. I found it's much nicer to work with. It's a lot thinner so I had to put a bit of a thicker layer on or make more of an effort to put a thicker layer on. But it worked a lot better than the PVA glue. It wasn't so tacky, it wasn't so sticky um, and the glitter still stuck to it just fine. So here's a piece I did. I put the glitter on, and I'm sorry the camera doesn't want to focus on the glitter very well. Um, here we go. So that's it with just the glitter sprinkles on top, which I thought looked quite beautiful. But then I was getting glitter kind of on paper and everywhere else. So I decided I would try and Mod Podge one on the top. And it didn't really work. It kind of dulled all the glitter. So it's really pretty still, but it, you can see it's just not as sparkly. So I wouldn't Mod Podge over the top. It kind of kills it a bit. And I would just leave it to be glittery. You know, at the end of the day, you're going to send it to someone else. <laughs> Let it be their problem <laughs> when all the glitter starts coming off. Um, so, yeah, so I did those ones. And then here's one of those uh, chipboard elements. So I covered that in the Tim Holtz Distress Glitter, which is a more chunky glitter, much bigger. 
And then I did the another one in the iridescent glitter as well, the white iridescent, so you can see what it looks like on the back. But on the front, front it looks quite nice, and you can see the glitter start to kind of come off there. Um, and then this was another one of those microfine glitters, and I just was a bit disappointed because it wasn't actually as glittery as I thought. And there you can see a, a little splodge of the iridescent glitter and, and the comparison between the two. So that's my the glitter I used, but it was more, um, it seemed to be more about the the color and the color saturation than the glitter. This was um, three pieces of a teal colored card. I punched up with my punches, glued them together. It gave me the thickness of the chipboard, um, but it was much cheaper and I just punched it with my punch. So I glued three layers together, then covered it in the iridescent um, glitter, but accidentally kind of got a blob on. Then this was the Tim Holtz glitter that I put on the decorative paper. And it didn't work so well because I decided I would try to rub it in and see if it could kind of give it a different effect and it just kind of looked ugly and rubbed off some of the glitter. And here's some of the Tim Holtz glitter on one of the chipboard pieces. And I decided to try doing two different glitters. So it's the chunky glitter and I've got the pink on the top and the green on the bottom as a stem. And I found that looked really nice and worked really well as well. Um, and here's a little tray that I've got. This was also a gift from my friend Anel. So I used to do the whole fold the paper in half pour the glitter over top, um, and then shake the glitter off back into the container and sometimes make a mess. This thing's genius. It's got this little tube and it funnels everything right back into the pot. Um, so if you have the opportunity to get one, I think they're great for glitter. Um, I've got a baby muslin, and so I've, I said in my original video, if you're a mom, save these, because they are genius for crafting. Um, uh, they've been amazing. So I've gotten glitter and glue on my little backing piece which is one of those non-stick mats. You can get them in like the food department. They're really cheap. Um, I got mine off of some kind of um, tape website. I think it was a Fix-It Crafts. It came in their starter kit of tape. And, um, and it's genius because I got glue all over it, took a baby wipe, wiped it all off, came off nice and easy, took my handy dandy muslin and dried it up. And they're great. They're really durable and sturdy. This is my favorite paintbrush of choice to go to um, for when I'm covering stuff with glue. It's flat and it's wide. I just quite like it. <laughs> Maybe I'm lazy and that's why I quite like it because it's nice and big. I don't have to do too much gluing. I don't know. Um, but I found it worked really well for these embellishments. So I'm just showing you how I made one of my embellishments now. And I basically just kind of covered it in glue and then found that actually if I rubbed it, it got stuck in those little holes. So in the end, I just started tapping it and kind of slapping it on, which meant that a bit more got on my mat, but it meant that less got in those little holes and those little grooves, and that seemed to work better for the glitter. And the more I kind of tapped it on, the more thicker of a layer of Mod Podge I got, which then meant the glitter stuck better, and I got a better coverage of glitter, glitter as well. Um, so here I am rummaging through my box trying to work out, ooh, which glitter should I use, instead of pre-planning and having it to the side. <laughs> And you can see how horribly dry my hands are. Oh my goodness, the winter is really kicking in in the UK. And it's getting quite chilly and my hands are, are starting to show. Um, so this glitter I got off of eBay. And I just typed in micro fine glitter. And then I got one of these little packs. I think it was something like 20 grams. Um, so I shake it on, let it loads of it go all over. And then I kind of lightly pat it on top, being really careful not to drag my finger because that pulls the glue off and pulls off everything else and then just give it a little light tap just to make sure that excess comes off and then you get this beautifully sparkly embellishment um, and then I didn't think about this I was going to show you how great and amazing it is because you can pour it right back in that bag and then I thought hang on this is a bit more difficult because I can't use my um, paintbrush and scoop it in. So you can see I'm tapping it in and it's great because it's all going straight in the bag. It's not making a big mess. But then I do like to take some kind of brush. Um, the brush I do use is actually just a brush from Primark. It's in the makeup aisle. Um, and it was on one of those clearances. Uh, they just had this massive set. I think I got it for like 20 or 50p. <laughs> it was great. And I use it for embossing powders and various other glitters. And it's just a really nice soft brush. Um, and I use it to just kind of brush everything down off of this tray and back into the bag so I don't have any leftover glitter remaining that's then going to end up on my next project. Um, so I love that little tray. I never thought I needed one until my friend Anel gave me one and I realized I do. 
Um, and here I'm plunking my paintbrush straight into some water so that my brush doesn't dry because I'm really good at forgetting about it and then leaving it and all of a sudden I've got this stiff, horrible brush. Um, and then here comes my trick. Got the baby wipe out, give it a nice wipe, get rid of all that glitter. And then you'll see my baby muslin come into action. <laughs> I feel quite proud of this. I just didn't want to give them away. You, like, I don't want to chuck them. Nobody wants to buy them because who wants to buy a muslin that your baby's puked on, you know, and that you've soaked up other various bodily fluids with. Um, and so it's fantastic because it means that I think about when I had my little babies um, and I also get to use it for crafting. So it's brilliant. Win-win. I think it's great. Um, so here's my card base. I'm bringing it back into the picture. Um, and what I want to do is, oh, I'm so sorry about this light. I don't know how to use this stupid light. It's like a fluorescent light, but it doesn't look like that when I'm sat at my craft table. It looks just nice and bright, but the instant I put the camera on, you get this like, you know, I'm going swimming in my video effect going on. I don't know what is going on with it. Um, but anyways, I'm, I'm basically talking about in this <laughs> bit where you can't hear me how I'm going to add on my elements and what I'm going to do. Um, so I kind of want to add a bit more interest than just a basic element glued onto the um, to my card. So in a moment you'll see me pull up my um, string. Oh, this is my glue trick that I learned from Natasha Foote, um, my favorite YouTube person at the moment. Um, so she takes this Tim Holtz Distress Collage Medium, Matte Medium um, glue. And she puts it into one of these little squeezy bottles. And I had bought a whole bunch of these squeezy bottles from AliExpress, which is the most amazing cheap online store, which most things come with free shipping. Um, and I had all these little fine tip glue bottles. And I was like, well, how do I get my glue in there? And what glue should I put in it? So at first I put PVA glue in, and I've used it with my kids, and it's great because it means no mess. There's no blobs of glue everywhere. I don't have to get paintbrushes out for them to use it. They just can squeeze this little bottle. Um, but then she, she, in one of her videos, she talks about how she gets a syringe and sucks up the glue and squirts it in. And there's me for hours with the PVA glue, like slowly dripping it into these little tiny tubes. Um, and it was such a pain. But anyways, I'm using the collage distress medium because it's like a, a very, very strong, um, mixed media sort of glue. So it, it attaches to most... Um, surfaces and it's really strong when it dries and it does dry quite quick um, so it's just really great for sticking on things like glitter card and stuff that doesn't really want to stick very easily um, so I've stuck it down now with my glue and then I'm gonna add a bit more um, extra dimension and extra characters to the card so I got these rolls of metallic thread from AliExpress as well. And they cost me about £2.50, £2.60 for that massive, massive roll. Really cheap, really good value for money, free shipping. So I have got about 10 different colors. And as you can see, I haven't yet sorted out a solution to make sure that that twine doesn't come undone. I cut some notches in the top and kind of hooked it through, um, but it still seems to unwind itself a bit. So I get a bit of a mess, but you know what? I've got enough there to last me a lifetime that if I end up with a few messy balls of excess string like this, it's not going to be the end of the world just to chop it off and um, and start again. But I love this twine. It is a rose gold twine. Really pretty. And then I've got the silver twine. I've also got like gold and I think I've got the metallic dark green. There's my little notch that I thought would save me, but it's... um. It's still just unraveling everywhere. This is embroidery thread, I think it's called. Um, but it has been, I mean, I've used loads of it. And, you know, I'll be using it till I die, probably, because it's just massive. So anyways, I get fed up at this point of trying to find the end, and I just chop off a big chunk and hope for the best. Um, and then find myself a nice, good, long piece. Um, and then this has been sort of the latest trend that's going on in a lot of cards to add a bit of character to the card is just winding up a big ball of thread and just gluing that stuff down. So I realize at this point I've glued my embellishment down so I can't really tuck it under there. So what I'm going to need to do is get my sentiment ready. And this is where it goes a little bit awful again um, because I stamp my sentiment, stamp it wonky, stamp it again, then I cut it, and then I realize I cut it wonky, and so I do it again. 
Um, so I apologize now because you're going to see me make a right mess out of this and this sentiment to go on my card. But the idea is that you've got your embellishment, which is the focal point of your card. You've got your twine, which kind of adds a little bit more character. And then you've got your sentiment, which kind of brings it all together. It gives you a purpose for your card. Um, and I quite like these sort of little three little things that you can put together. And I mean, if you haven't got glitter, then you can just buy an embellishment, any kind of semi-large embellishment and you'll have the same effect and just go through your sewing box see what kind of thread you got in there I'm sure a white thread would look just as good um, so it's quite a nice simple card that you can do and you get quite a lot of different effects so um, here we go here's my really bad job at cutting a banner I didn't cut in the center <laughs> and then I didn't cut all the way through and I just decided this is just so utterly hideous and I couldn't seem to fix it when I do this sort of thing, I just, yeah, I just chucked it to the side. I'm like, right, we're going to start again. I've actually got a hole punch, um, not a hole punch, a, a, a craft punch that cuts bunting for me, but it was a bit too large, and so I couldn't really use it. Um, but that's why I rely on punches, because I am just awful with um, doing that kind of banner bunting end. Um, so I think this one's okay. It's not great. But I roll with it anyways because I don't want this video to drag on. And I'm sorry that the video is already so long as it is. But I hope you can sit here with a glass of wine and just laugh at me through it. Um, and then I hope you don't feel sick and dizzy from <laughs> this stupid light. Um, so anyways, here's my little, my little sentiment. And then I go and I take, I think I take some foam tape to kind of pop it up a bit. Which, in retrospect, wasn't the best idea because I do lie it over top of the embellishment which is also raised so the better idea would have been to put the foam tape on half of my sentiment so that it stands level with my embellishment that's already on the card. So the trick with making this like messy pretty splodge of thread is you just kind of roll it all about scrunch it up and then what I normally do is tuck in the extra ends that are sticking out. I don't think I did it on this one. I think I was feeling so stressed out that <laughs> everything was going so wrong. Um, but there's a simple, quite classy little birthday card um, and it uses up your glitter, it uses up those embellishments um, and it just makes a really pretty lovely design. So I'm coming to the end of my video now. I'm about out of time. I'm going to leave you with a bunch of photos of the cards that I made with the rest of the embellishments to give you some ideas and inspiration. And I hope you like and follow my YouTube channel um, and join me for my next set videos that are coming up. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, take care. Bye.